you need to... Right, so, I mean, we, we can delete it afterwards, so I'm just going to do it under my patient name. But I'm going to go to acquire single B scan, and then I'm going to take it off full auto, so I'm going to be on semi-auto. So if you can pop your chin on the chin rest and head against the full head rest, you won't be able to see it at the moment, but in a minute you'll see a um, green fixation cross. So I'm going to press start. So what I'm doing now is a high definition vitreous scan. Actually, let me just stop that a second. Just stay where you are, sorry. I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to change the C gates, so that's the concentration of the signal, from poreal retinal to vitreal retinal. And so it's telling me it's going to do one B scan. It's going to do it 50 times to give us one image to look at, and it's going to take 1.32 seconds. If you, the highest possible definition you could get, you could increase the repeats to 100, mm. but then you're asking the patient to fix it much longer. Not mm. much longer. Yes. So the default is 50, because most patients can fixate for 1.32 seconds. So I'm going to press OK. So then I'm just going to press Start at the top. So there's no voice prompt now, because I'm in semi-auto mode. Yes. So I'm just going to talk the patient through the scan. I'm going to wait for the retina to appear here, and I'm going to wait for Ready to appear in this top corner. When it does, I can grab the patient's retina, just drag it down a bit to the and I, I can rotate so I can make it wrong now so I'm losing the quality of image so can you give me three blinks and then keep your eyes nice and wide looking at the cross nice and wide nearly there done you can blink sit back and relax so I double click the result So again, this, this, this type of scan is one of the very few where colour is quite good to look at the detail in the vitreous, but the vitreous is nicely attached to either side of the fovea there. So you, you can, in black and white, you can adjust the con, all I'm doing with the mouse, but you'll see down here, I'm adjusting the contrast and brightness. I'll just reset it. So then we obviously then we could output that and do that as a report. Mm. So that's doing a scan in semi-auto, but to begin with, be, auto. you go into auto because you're not familiar with the software. But the beauty of the Revo is that when you are familiar with it, you have much more control over how you do a scan and, and the settings on that you can adjust. The settings button is always there for you to access. So at the moment, We've got a Retina 3D scan, and I can press um, settings, and it's going to do a scan width of 10 millimeter. Well, if I wanted to, I could change that to five or 12. Um, all this is ready available, and if somebody accidentally um, clicks set as default, you can always just restore to factory settings. So I'm going to cancel that one. Um, and would you be able to do a semi-auto uh, fundus image where you've got them to look at different gazes uh, yep. to get a slightly wider field? Yes, let's try that then. So um, pop your chin back on and head against the forehead rest. But as when we were talking about, we're going to be limited because we, you know, it's the pupil size. The yeah. So, well, we'll try it with the lights on first. So I, I can grab the fixation there. So now I'm well off the fovea now. Um, or I could grab the fixation, rotate the eye the other way. Left and right you can also do, but left and right you might as well do in these settings because that's just 
most people prefer the disc just off center. That would be disc dead center, and that's disc off the periphery. Um, so let me just start that again. Well, that's not a bad size pupil. But in, in the semi-auto mode where we are now, you also have the option of flicking it to infrared. So you can see an infrared image. Mm. And sometimes, you know, you hear that objective lens drop in and out. If it's showing too much on this image, you will get a white flare on the edge of the fundus. And that's just down to pupil size. But if you do it this way, you could then grab the fundus image anywhere, but not the fixation and drag it. So I can actually make it wrong. So now, if I took an image now, I'd get a white flare sure. on the edge of the fundus. So just give me two blinks and then keep your eyes nice and wide. Sit back and relax. So this window comes up, I've got to choose one of these. I'm just gonna choose accept. That's the difference between the fundus photograph in auto mode and fundus photograph in semi-auto. But like I said, everyone that gets it first time, because hypothetically, if you bought one, I'd be coming back doing the training and the next day you think, well, I can't remember everything you said. It's easier just to do every one on auto. Mm. But, yet, but you have to bear in mind that even the manufacturer says one in 10 patients won't work on full auto. So you have to know how to do semi-auto. Yeah. I mean, it's not difficult. If we go back to say retina, are you right to do another yep. image? Yeah, no, no. he's going to pay you for it. Yeah. So don't worry. The more scans you do, All right. the more you're going to get. <laughs> so pop, pop your chin back on. So I've untipped full auto, and I'm just going to press start in a moment. So I'm just going to wait to see the retina appear here, and ready to appear there. When it does, I know I can click acquire. There's ready, I'll hover over here. Okay, give me two blinks and then eyes nice and wide. Nearly done. Okay, sit back and relax. So if we're just rolling through that image. But semi-auto is not difficult to do. Uh, arguably, semi-auto is better because the patient is more likely to or feel more comfortable listening to an optometrist than they are a computerised mm. voice prompt. So, um, but as I said, when you first get it, you think, oh, there's so much going on here. I just want to do everyone on full auto. But you get what what... One reason why you get better results long term with semi auto is in the full auto mode, the um, voice prompt is asking the patient to look at the fixation cross, and the voice prompt says, Please blink and keep your eyes open. Then there's a bit of a delay, and then the scan starts. It's a red line that goes from top to bottom. In semi auto mode, you're asked, you say to the patient, Look at the green fixation cross, and when you click acquire, the scan starts straight away. So you're reducing the time that the patient's got to fixate on a cross and therefore you're reducing the chance of potential motion artefacts. Yeah. So therefore your results overall long term would be better in the semi-auto mode. Um, so typically would you start with Bender's photography and then you do go on to OCT? I think a lot of people will do, because of funded photography being an issue with pupil size, they'll do, OCT first. No, they'll do one eye funders photograph say the right eye, then they'll do all their OCT scans and then they'll do the left eye fundus photograph. Because the problem with flashing, as soon as you flash the patient, their pupils go zoom. Mm. So it's very difficult to do a right and left one after the other mm. fundus photograph. Mm. Mm. You're not, you've got to give the pupil a chance to, to open up. Mm. And the way to do that, 
would be do do the one eye camera then you do whatever OCT scans you want to do. Well, they're looking inside that dark window, mm -hmm. so the chances are their pupils will open up and again That's right. before you do the other. With funders photography, you always get what's called second eye syndrome. Mm -hmm. Your second image is never good as your first, because as soon as you flash a patient, you can sense your reflex. Yeah, the pupils just disappear to nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't, but, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, like with any desktop funders camera, if the patient's pupil size is small, very small, the only way you're going to get a fundus image is if you dilate. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's a trick I think a lot of people do, um, would be one eye fundus image, then whatever of these OCT scans you want to do, and then end with the other eye. Yeah, so I think that would be a good idea, wouldn't it, to do retina, uh, sorry, fundus photograph, um, then retina, disc, and anterior. Anterior, if you want. I mean, you're not going to do anterior on every patient, are you? But glaucoma suspect patients, you would. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then end up with the other eye, by which time you'd hope that the pupils opened up a little bit more. Mm. But it, you always get the right um, lighting as well, you know. I mean, we've done images with the lights on, but in another room, I mean, are, are they LEDs? Mm. Yeah, okay, because normally LEDs makes it worse but they're not too bad those images but we've both got decent sized pupils mm. so you know um, when you get Mavis who's 97 years old and it's the size of a pin brick you either you're going to get your best possible shot or you're going to get nothing at all mm. without dilation. Can I pause it here?